Hi everyone, so today we have a very short video, but actually practicing this stuff is going to take a while. As always, feel free to read through this, even though you probably won't understand anything, and I will repeat this at the very end. Alright, so what I would like you to do now is to click on this link and watch this very short video. And when you're done, please come back. Alright, so hopefully you did what I asked you to do, and you saw that, well, there was a magnifying glass, and there was this piece of paper, and there was this really bright dot in the piece of paper, and it burnt. And I assume you know that this happens because the magnifying glass takes the rays of the sun and it concentrates them in this one spot. And because there's so many rays concentrated in this really, really little spot, there's so much energy per square centimeter that this just starts burning and we have a fire. Well, this magnifying glass is an example of a lens. And to be more specific, is an example of a converging lens. And converging just means that it takes the rays and it puts them together in, as opposed to make them more separate. Now, what we're going to study today is the thin converging lens. And the only difference between a converging lens and a thin converging lens is that in the thin converging lens, we're going to imagine that this lens is infinitely thin. This is not realistic, but it's the only way that we can do the calculations in physics. Otherwise, things get really, really out of hand. So we imagine that this is very, very thin compared to whatever it is that we're looking at. And, you know, it's a lens, and it's making the rays go together. That's why we call it converging. Now, it turns out that this thing, this lens, is apart from burning things, they're useful for a lot of other stuff. And in order to see what they're useful for, first, we need to figure out how they work. Now, the first thing that we realize is that these things take two rays that are coming parallel to each other, as you can see, and they make them, they project them into one point. Now, this point here is called the principal focus of the lens. So, there you go, principal focus. And, of course, each lens has two, right? Because, in this case, the rays are coming this way, but they could also be coming from the other side, and then it, they would still get projected into a point, right? So each lens has one on this side, one on the other side, because the rays of light can come from either way, okay? Now, because we're physicists and we like to draw things with a little bit more precision than this, we're going to make a little diagram. So, let's do that. Okay, so the first thing that we always do is we draw a straight line, and this straight line is basically just showing us the center of the lens. So here we have a straight line, and here's our lens, which could be a magnifying glass, or could be some, something else. And then we had these rays that were coming parallel from really, really far, and they both get projected into this point here that we said is called the principal focus. So let's label this guy. This is the principal focus. Principal focus. Now we normally are much lazier than this, so all we do is we make a little line here and we say F <coughs> for focus. And again, remember that rays could be coming this way and then be focused here. So at the same distance here, we should have another principal focus. And just to distinguish it from this one, even though they're really the same thing, we will call it F prime, which just means it's the other principal focus. Now apart from this, we should be able to see that there is a certain distance between the center of the lens, and careful, not from here, but from the center of the lens, because remember this is, even though I'm drawing it like this, this is an infinitely thin lens. So there's a distance from here to here. Okay, so let's label this distance here. And we call this distance the focal length. So each, length, each lens in the world has a focal length and a principal focus. And this is all we need to know in order to understand how the lens creates images. And I'll quickly show you how. All right, so what we actually use lenses for, apart from burning things, is to create images of things. Right? So for example, your camera does that, or a projector does that. It creates an image of something that's behind, and then we can see it, and we're like, oh, cool, now I have an image of this thing. 
How does it do that? Well, it's not that complicated. So imagine that here I am, and I want to see where this lens is going to create my image. And the idea of an image is, well, from this point in my head, again, there's plenty of light rays coming out. Some of these light rays will go through the lens and will end up at one point. And from this point, they will also come out again. So if I look at things from here, it will look at, to me as if the light was coming not from this guy here, but from where these, po these rays made again from this point. We call this the image of the point, because it's really not the point itself. I'm here, not here. But to someone who's located here, it will look as if there was another little copy of me here. Because for each point that I have here, my lens is going to project things to another point somewhere over here, and then I'll be able to see it. Let's see how this works. So in order to do this, all I need to do is draw two rays. First, I'm going to draw one ray that's going out of my head and parallel to this line that goes to the center of the, of the lens. And remember, remember, this doesn't mean that there's only one ray coming out of here. There's plenty of rays, but I just need two to find out where they intersect. And then any other ray will also go through the same point. So again, just need two. Okay, so I have this ray that goes this way. And then remember what happened when we had a, a magnifying glass, that the rays that were coming parallel went through the, yeah, the principal focus. Okay. So this thing will do the same. This one's coming in parallel, so it's going to go through the principal focus. So I can just draw the prolongation of this ray, and then there I go. Now I need another ray. And the next ray that I'm going to draw is one that goes through the center of the lens. And again, not through here, not through here, but through the very center of the lens. Because remember that this is really infinitely thin, even though we're you know, drawing it like that. So here I have my ray that goes right to the center of the, of the lens. And now we need to think about, okay, so what's going to happen to this ray? And in this case, we need to remember that because this is at the center, we're talking about two pieces of glass that are perfectly flat. And we have a ray that's coming in at a certain angle. Then it will get refracted, remember, and then it will come out at the same angle. So this angle is not going to change. And we also said that this lens was infinitely thin. So this part here is actually infinitely thin. It's just like that. So what's going to happen is that this ray is going to come at an angle, come out at the same angle, and whatever happens in the middle, we don't care because this is infinitely thin. Which means that a ray that goes right through the center of the, of the lens will not get deviated at all. We just continue straight. See, this only works if we imagine the lens to be thin. If we don't do this, then things get really complicated, and that's why we talk about the thin lens approximation. We assume it's thin, because otherwise we can't do the calculations. Okay, so let's just take this guy and prolong it further, 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 and we'll see that it meets this one here. So this gives me the image of this point. So this point at the top of my head has an image here. And of course, probably this point will have an image here, and so on and so on. So I can reconstruct myself and I will look something like this. So let's look, uh, take a look at this image and, and, and analyze what happened to it. First thing that I can see is that it's upside down. Okay? And instead of upside down we say that the image is inverted. This will not always happen. Sometimes it will be the right side up. But in this case the image is inverted, not straight. I can also see that this is smaller than this. So this e image, we say, that is magnified. Magnified just means that this is bigger than this. And apart from this, we can also see, well, that the image is real. And now, what, what do I mean by real? What I mean by real is that if I put my finger here, I will actually see some light reflecting of my fingers. These, these light rays are really crossing here. I can touch them. I could project this image into a screen. And if I projected this onto a screen, I would see an image. So this is not something that I'm imagining that I'm seeing, like in the mirror. Remember in the mirror? I, I could look into the mirror and 
like if this was a mirror, right, I would look at it from here and it would appear to me that rays were coming from here, but actually there's nothing behind the mirror. So this is not a real image. This is called a virtual image because the rays really aren't coming from there. I'm just imagining things. However, in this case, the rays are really meeting at this point, and therefore this is real. So this is a real image. And later on I'll show you an example of a virtual image. So this is inverted, magnified, and real. Apart from this, we can think about, okay, well, this is magnified, but how magnified it is. Okay? And, and of course, we can calculate magnification in, in a couple of ways. Let me show you one, the most straightforward, and then one that's a little bit less straightforward. So, of course, the most straightforward would be just, I measure this height, and because it's the height of the image, I'm going to call it h prime, because it's not the real height. And I'm going to call this h, because it's the actual height, right? So if I want to know how much bigger this is than this, all I need to do is divide these two things, right? So then the magnification is just going to be h prime over h. But I don't have to do this. I could do something else. I could do something else because these two triangles are equal in the sense that they have the same angle. So the proportions between this and this are equal to the proportions between this and this. Therefore, if this gets bigger, this gets bigger. If this gets bigger, this gets bigger. So what we can say then is that the magnification will also be equal to the proportion between these two lengths. So let's say that I call this distance prime because it's the distance of the image. And let's say that I call this distance because it's the distance of the object. This is also going to be equal to d prime over d. You can use either formula to calculate the magnification, and I really encourage you to not memorize this and just understand what magnification is. It's just the proportion between how big this is and how big this is. And you can figure it out in a number of ways. All right, so first thing, I apologize for the noise, but you guys are right next door, so now you know how noisy you can get. Anyway, um, now I'm going to do exactly the same thing I did before. Here I am, here's a lens. The only thing is that this time I'm in front of the focal length instead of behind it. Let's see if that makes any difference to where the image gets formed. So what I'm going to do is just draw one, one ray of light that you know goes to the focal point, then the other one goes to the center, and it keeps going, and see what happens. Okay, so the, again, the first one goes straight and then through the focal point my first ray and then I make my second ray that goes to the center and remember it just keeps going but see what happens now is that these guys don't meet not only they don't meet but they're getting separated more and more and more so there should be no, no image formed right that they, they don't meet they don't meet at a point and they don't meet at a point and there's no image but just like with mirrors I can imagine there's someone here looking at this and this is a really big eye that is an eye okay so According to this person who's looking at things from here, it would look like this ray is actually not coming from me, but coming from somewhere here, right? And same thing for this ray. It looks like it's coming from somewhere there. So what I would do is like I would prolong these rays, make them longer, follow what I think they will be doing according to that guy, and, again, sorry for the noise, it looks like they meet at this point here. So a person that's looking at things from the other side of the lens is not going to see me here, but is actually going to see a bigger, more distant version of me. So let's think about the properties of this image. So for the first thing is, it, is it shrunk or magnified? And obviously, this is magnified, right? It's much bigger than me. So the image is magnified. And in this case, it's not inverted anymore, right? This is, this is straight, so it's a straight image. And now, do you think this is a virtual image or a real image? That is, if I put my finger in here, am I going to touch any light rays? Is my finger going to get hot? Or this is a totally fictitious thing that really doesn't exist, and it's just in this guy's mind, because he's imagining that these guys are coming from there when they're really coming from here. Pause the video and say it out loud. Okay, hopefully you realized that this is not a real place where the, where the rays actually join. It just looks like it for the guy on the other side of the lens. And therefore this is a virtual image. 
So we have a case of a magnified straight virtual image. And that's what happens when I put things in front of the focal point of a lens. And that's why these lenses, thin converging lenses, act as magnifying glasses. Let me show you. Okay, so I recorded this really short video. And you can see first that my, that my pen is right here. And there's nothing here. Right? There's just the lens, and right next to it is the pen. And as I play the video, so when I turn this around, suddenly we can see an image that's not the pen. But when I turn this around again, there's nothing here. So this is not real. This is just something that we believe is happening because we're looking at it. But when I turn this around, we can see that it is just an illusion. There's, there's no place behind the magnifying glass where this is coming from. This is just something that we believe because the rays seem to be coming from there. All right, so we're done. That's all we needed to look at. So describe the action of a thin converging lens and a beam of light using ray diagrams. We've done that. Use the term principle of focus and focal length. We've done that. And finally, draw and interpret simple ray diagrams that illustrate the formation of real and virtual images by a single converging lens. That's what we just did. So this is, again, not a lot of things. It's pretty simple, but it's important that you do it over and over again so that you get some practice so that when you see this problem in the OGCC, which I guarantee will be there, you get all the points. And it's also interesting to know how these things work. That's how your camera works. That's how your eye works. That's how the projectors in the school work. So by mastering this, you will have a much better understanding of how the technology around you works. All right, see you later and have a nice day.